pixies and fairies and elves. Oh my. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where we talk about nothing but fragrances. So in this edition, we are doing the last Cacherelle fragrance in the series that I have a review, if you were, I suppose, on this fragrance. And it is none other than Anais, Anais. Yes, you can see it here. Yes, by Cacherel. And this, as you see, is in a vintage style packaging. So let's open it. So here we go. This is it in all its glory. Looks like a little deodorant bottle, doesn't it? And you can see the little, I don't know if that's, I don't know what that's meant to be. And you can see all around it, it says Anaïs, Anaïs du Cacherel. And you can see that the Cacherel logo is all encompassed. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? It's all encompassed in, in a little box. I'm not saying this right, am I? The new Cacherel version, it doesn't have, have, let me show you. So this is Cacherel Paris here. So the new one does not have this enclosed around it. So it just says Cacherel. So there we go. Right, back to the fragrance. So this has, it has everything in it. It has all this and a bucket of KFC chicken too. You know, it has a whole bucket. You know, if you were to buy a KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Not that this smells of Kentucky Fried Chicken, but you know, you pick something out and you pick something out and you take something out and you get a thigh and you get a breast and it's like, oh my. Yes, this has got everything in it. It is a floral bomb. It's a spicy floral bomb, I would say. It's not a fresh floral. So if you're looking for a fresh, clean. It's slightly clean, but it's not overtly clean, I would say. Let's spray it. It's sharp and green, so it is sharp, but it's not too pungent. Now, this is the pre-reformulated version, so I am not sure what the new version smells like, and I managed to procure a pre-reformulated version. This, I can smell the galbanum in this, but I can smell the hyacinth. That's kind of like, it's quite a sharp floral. It is sharp, I suppose. I know, I know I'm making a bit of a contradiction to myself, but it is sharp and floral. It does have a little bit of soapiness about it, but there is the spiciness, which comes from the carnation quite spicy actually and there is even listed a little bit of incense in there as well I'm just looking at the notes here on Fragrantica now these notes let's just go through some of them shall we so it's white lily hyacinth honeysuckle galbanum orange blossom lavender bergamot lemon and blackcurrant that's just in the top I mean <laughs> You could have that just in a fragrance. Then in the heart, you've got lily, Moroccan jasmine. I'm not sure if I can smell jasmine in this. Carnation, honeysuckle, tuberose. I can smell the tuberose. Lang lang, no, not really. Iris and rose and orris root. Now, there is some powderiness that comes from this. Then in the base, you have incense. Yes, I can smell a little bit of that. Oak moss, yes, I can smell that. Musk, leather, sandalwood. Not sure if I can smell leather in this. Vetiver, cedar, amber and patchouli. Wow, what a, what a cacophony of notes. Now, this fragrance, it reminds me of a scene in the film from the 1971 film, 
the boyfriend with Twiggy, our famous Twiggy, and Christopher Gable. It also has our Babs Windsor in it, our fabulous Barbara Windsor in it as well. And it has Glenda Jackson, who then went on to be a Labour MP here in the UK. But there's a scene in that film where Twiggy, in her mind, is imagining that her and Christopher Gable, the main dancers, they are pixies and elves in an enchanted forest, dancing around, doing steps of gracefulness and ethereal. It's, it has that, but there is a twisted dark side in this forest where they come across these pixies and elves that are full of debauchery and full of scandal and carnal sex and it just has it it, it, it just depicts all of this of the of the moss and the greenness pixies and elves with a crumbling gothic cathedral and this river flowing by and they are laid to rest. They're put under a spell and laid to rest and then they are brought back to life again. And this fragrance kind of, it has a, a kind of a pixie, dark, gothic, elf-like quality about it in this enchanted forest. You know, it's, it's like, come here and we are so lovely and pretty then it kind of bewitches and has a bit of a spell. And I quite like it about this fragrance. You know, it, to some, they will not depict this, but to me, it, it has that greenness, that floralness, that slightly, slightly smokiness. It has, Oh, it's a little bit effervescent, a little bit sparkling, but underneath that sparkleness, there's some spice and some depth, and it has a bit of a dark side to it. It's quite a complex fragrance, this, I would say. Actually, Cacherelle fragrances, most of them are complex, apart from maybe the most newest one yes i am i'm not sure about the flankers but that's a bit more playful it's a bit more straightforward it's a bit more linear i think the performance on this fragrance and the longevity is moderate it's not monstrous sillage it's heavy projecting i would say in the first half an hour and then it comes a little bit closer to the skin but at arm's length just at arm's length it leaves that little sillage bubble and the longevity is about five to six hours on my skin this is a fragrance i used to wear years and years ago and i said i would never get a bottle of it so never say never because i did i was intrigued i was i wanted to see if it still held memories of the mid 90s for me which this does because i used to wear this to death around about 1996 and it had been out a while then it came out in the late 70s 78 79 and i do believe there were four perfumers behind it and it was i think i do believe this is cacherelle's first fragrance that they made which is quite something. Let's face it, for the time, it, it, it has that kind of late 70s, early 80s kind of time capsule about it. It's a time capsule fragrance. It's a vintage fragrance. You know, it is vintage nowadays. Anything that's probably over five years old in the fragrance industry and fragrance community is classed as vintage. Things move and evolve so quickly nowadays. Back then, not so much they didn't, but this definitely 
is a classic, stands the test of time. It's beloved by mothers, by grandmothers. You know, it's it has that appeal about it. And if you're 18 or 19 or 20 and you want to rock this, then rock it. It doesn't make a flying fig what you wear. So don't let society, don't let people dictate what you must and what you must not wear. Because I'm, I was about to say, I'm not pushing up the daisies, I'm pushing 50. And I'm, well, I'm 50 very, very soon. And for me, this I'm going to wear till probably for a long, long time, and I'm glad I got it. This is the 50 ml. I won't make this as a fragrance. I will wear a lot and a lot. I will wear this when I want to feel devilish. Yes, devilish, but still innocent. It's innocent, but devilish, but not devilish as in not overtly devilish. It's mischievous devilish. That's why I equate this to pixies and elves dancing and fairies dancing in an enchanted forest that has light and darkness but mostly light. Anaïs, Anaïs de Cacheral. So you've been watching another edition of The Fragrantition but until next time remember Every fairy is born with a finite number of curses, as they say. So embrace them. Ciao for now.